Hello again, my name is William Pye, and in this video we're going to be talking about the properties of implications. So, last time we talked about the properties of connectives. Specifically, they were the conjunction, disjunction, and the negation, but we didn't talk about the implication or biconditional too much. What we want to do in this video, however, is to focus on the implication of the biconditional and see what properties they have and how they differ from the previous family of connectives. Previously, properties were demonstrated for the negation, conjunction, and the disjunction. Some of the most notable properties were the following. You have item potency, you have associativity, commutativity, distribution. Many of these properties may be familiar to you from, say, algebra or arithmetic. The reason is, is that these properties are very similar to the properties you have for addition or multiplication. However, the implication and biconditional will exhibit notably different properties. It's what are known as reflexivity, symmetry, antisymmetry, transitivity. These properties will give the implication and biconditional a different character than the previous three connectives, which is actually going to be more closely related to relations and functions than it is to algebra. First, for any statement, the statement implies itself and is also equivalent to itself. So, to begin, say you have a proposition P and consider P implies P. If P happens to be true, then true implies true is a true statement. Likewise, if P happens to be false, false implies false is also a true statement yielding a tautology. Thus, P implies P is always true. Likewise, you can do the same thing for the biconditional. P if and only if P. Well, if P is true, then true if and only if true is a true statement. And false if and only if false is always a true statement also, which yields a tautology. What this basically says is that a statement is reflexive. That is, it's always related to itself, whether by implication or by biconditional. Much like the conjunction and the disjunction, the biconditional is also commutative. So let's consider two statements, P and Q, and consider P if and only if Q, and Q if and only if P. Remember, the biconditional is only true if the two operands match in truth value. So if you have double true, that will be true. True false will be false. False true will be false, and double false will be true. So if you reverse the operands, the same thing actually happens. Double true will be true, false true will be false, true false will be false, and double false will be true. Now remember, the equivalence is actually the same as the biconditional, they're the same operator. So the same rules apply. Double true will be true, double false will be true, double false will be true, and double true will be true, giving me a tautology. Thus the biconditional is indeed commutative although there's an alternate term for this, which is symmetry. So if you think of the actual biconditional statement, the actual double arrow as being like a vertical line, a line of symmetry, then flipping across that vertical line, that operator doesn't change anything. So one uses the term symmetry in this case. However, the implication is notably not symmetric. Specifically consider the case when P is true and Q is false. True implies false will be a false statement, but false implies true will be a true statement. And unfortunately, the equivalence is only true when these two match, which they don't. So this is a false statement. The implication is not symmetric. Instead, the implication is something else, something known as anti-symmetric. That is, the implication can be reversed if and only if the hypothesis is equivalent to the conclusion. This actually comes from something from last time. Recall from last time that the biconditional can be rewritten as a conjunction of two opposing implications. Specifically, P implies Q conjunction Q implies P is equivalent to P if and only if Q. Now, I'm going to do a little rewriting. The reason being is because the equivalence and the biconditional happen to be the same operation, just regarded differently. So swapping the symbols, you have P implies Q, conjunction Q implies P, if and only if P is equivalent to Q, which is the statement that was made above. Later, this property will be an important rule of inference in making arguments, so this is actually something to go ahead and mention now. Next, the implication is transitive, transferring a truth value forward. That is, if P implies Q and Q implies R, then P must also imply R. So what this basically means is that if you think of it like triggering mechanisms, if P triggers Q, then Q triggers R, then P through Q must also trigger R. To demonstrate this, we're going to bring out a truth table like this. So we have three statements. We have P, Q, and R, and we want to see what happens in all cases, and we want to get a tautology at the end. So let's consider P implies Q. So P implies Q is only false when P is true and Q is false. So for the first two statements, we have that is true. For the next two cases, we have false. And for the remainder, they're all true, giving me this column here. For Q implies R, same thing. This is only false when Q is true and R is false. So we have true, then false. Then we have true, then true. 
Then we have true, then false, then true, and true, giving me this column here. Next, we conjunction the first two columns to get this column here. So true and true gives true. So true and false gives false, then false, then false, then true. Then we have false, then true, then true, giving me this column here. For the next column, we look at P and R and look at the implication. Again, the implication is only false when P is true and R is false. So we have true, then false, then we have true, then false, and the remainder of them will be true, giving me this column here. Lastly, we look at the implication from this column to this column to give the final column. So true implies true is true, false implies false is true, false implies true is true, false implies false is true, true implies true is true, false implies true is true, true implies true is true, and that gives me the tautology at the end. So this indeed is true. Later, this property will be known as the hypothetical syllogism, which is another one of those important rules of inference that we'll be discussing at length later. Also, the biconditional inherits transitivity from the implication, considering that the biconditional can be rewritten as a conjunction of two opposing implications. We have three statements here, P, Q, and R. However, what's going to happen now is the biconditional is only true if the operands match, and it is false if they mismatch. So double true will give me true. True false and false true will give me false for the next four cases. Double false will give me true for the final two cases, giving me column one. For column two here, I do the same thing for Q and R. So that will give me true, then false, then false, then true, and then also true, then false, then false, then true, giving me the second column. For the third column, I conjunction the first two columns, so true and true will give me true. However, the appearance of any falses immediately yields false. So that will yield false, 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 and false. So the next six cases are all false, and true and true at the end will give me true. Notice that in this column, the only true cases are the first and last. Now we do the same thing with P and R with the biconditional. So we have if they match, it's true. If they mismatch, it is false. So we have true, then false, then true, then false, then false, then true, then false, then true, giving me this column here. To get the final column, I take the last two columns here and I do the implication. So true implies true will give me true. However, false implies true or false as a true statement. Thus, the next six cases are all true. And the only last interesting case is the final case that is true implies true gives true. That yields the tautology. Viewing the biconditional as an operator, it shares the associativity property with the conjunction and the disjunction, this algebraic-like property of regrouping. To show this, we take three propositions, P, Q, and R, and we consider the different groupings where you have P and Q grouped versus Q and R grouped and see what happens. So recall, the biconditional is true if the operands match and it is false if they mismatch. So true and true will make true, true false and false true will give false, Double false, however, will give true, giving this table right here. We now compare this to the table here of R. So true and true will give true, false and true will give false, true and false will give false, double false will give true. True and false will give false, double false will give true, true and true will give true, and true false will give false, giving this table right here. Now let's consider Q and R. What you have here is true and true will give true, then false, then false, then true. On the other hand, you have true, then false, then false, then true, like so. Now we compare this to P, in which case what we get is true, false, false, and true, but then we flip over and we get false, true, true, and false, giving this column right here. Now you compare column two to column four, and you notice they match up. True and true will give true, double false will give true, and so on down the road. Double false gives true, then true, then true, then true, then true, then true, showing the tautology. As such, successive biconditional statements do not require parentheses to separate them. A common practice in algebra is to operate on both sides of an equation to yield a new statement of equality. However, can one operate on both sides of a logical equivalence in the same manner? So for example, if P is equivalent to Q, if I was to negate both sides, would the negation still be equivalent? The answer is yes, actually it is true. So first let's consider the negation. We have two statements, P and Q, and we want to show that if P is equivalent to Q, that implies that negation of P is equivalent to negation of Q. So let's start off with equivalence. So double true will yield true. True false will yield false, false true will yield false, and double false will yield true also. If we negate P, that will give us false false true true. Negation of Q will give false true false true. 
Now let's actually equate these two and see what happens. So double false will yield true, true false will yield false, true false will yield false, and double true will yield true. And one notices that column one and column four are identical. So double true will yield true, double false will yield true, double false will yield true, and double true will yield true, giving us the tautology. Now, if you look at this really closely, you'll notice that one could actually say that the implication here could have been replaced with a biconditional and gotten a tautology as well, because column one and column four are verbatim the same. However, the implication is used here as will parallel what will occur with the conjunction and the disjunction in the following two cases. Next, consider the conjunction. What we're going to do is start with an equivalence, P is equivalent to Q, and then see if that implies that P conjunction with R is equivalent to Q conjunction with R. That is, if you start with an equivalence and conjunction both sides with some fixed proposition, is the equivalence maintained? Is it preserved? So let's start with the base equivalence. So P is equivalent to Q, so double true will yield true, true false will yield false, false true will yield false, and double false will yield true, giving me this first column. Now let's do the conjunction between P and R. So True and true will yield true, true false will yield false, true and true will yield true, true false will yield false, and then from here forward, the false in the first column will end up yielding false in this column. Now, let's do the same thing with Q and R. So, true and true will yield true, true and false will yield false, false and true will yield false, and double false will yield false. Double true will give true, and then this basically repeats, false, false, and false, giving me this column here. Now we're going to do the equivalence between these two columns to get the next column. So true and true will make true, false and false will make true, true false will make false, double false will make true, false true will yield false, double false will then yield true for the last three cases. So we get this column, and now for the implication, we take column one and we take column four and do the implication to get the final column here, which hopefully will be the tautology. So true implies true is true, true implies true is true, False implies false is true. False implies true is also true. False implies false is true. False implies true is true. True implies true is true, giving me the last two cases. Thus, indeed, the conjunction does preserve equivalence. Last, consider the disjunction. We're going to do the exact same thing. You have the equivalence between P and Q, and I want to see if that implies that P disjunction with R is equivalent to Q disjunction with R. So the base equivalence starts off the same. You have double true will be true, True false and false true will both be false, and then double false will be true, giving me the same first column from the previous chart that we had. Now, let's look at P disjunction with R. So remember, the disjunction is true if one or the other operand happens to be true. So P being true makes these first four cases all true. From here forward, false disjunction with true will give me two true, double false will give me false, false true will give me true, and double false will give me false, giving me this column. Then Q disjunction with R will give me the following. So that should be true, 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 and then false, and then true, 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 and then false, giving me this column here. Now we're going to do the equivalence between these two columns to get the next. So true and true gives true, true and true makes true, true and true makes true, true and false makes false, true and true makes true, false and true makes false, true and true makes true, and false and false makes true, like this. So here's this column. Now let's compare column one to column four to get the implication at the end. So true implies true is true. True implies true is true. Now false implies true or false as a true statement. Thus the next four cases are automatically true. The only ones that are interesting are the bottom two, which are true implies true is true and true implies true is true, giving me the tautology. Consequently, the disjunction will maintain equivalence just as much as the conjunction or the negation do. In summary, the properties covered so far can be written in the following way. You have the reflexive property of the implication and the biconditional. You have the symmetry of the biconditional. You have the anti-symmetry of the implication. You have the transitivity of the implication and the biconditional. You have the associative law for the biconditional. And you have the preservation of equivalence for the negation, conjunction, and the disjunction. All of these properties will be used not only to build proofs and make arguments, but also to reduce and simplify any logical statements that we run across. And that's where we'll stop for today. Next time, we'll start discussing logical arguments and the rules of inference. Below is a list of references for today's video. We have Magnus's For All X, we have Suppus and Hill's First Course in Mathematical Logic, and Suppus's Introduction to Logic. If you like today's video, go ahead and hit the like button below. If you have a comment or question, go ahead and leave that below as well, and we'll respond to you as soon as we can. Thank you for your time, and we'll see you next time. See you then!